Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotional. We are very excited starting this new week. And I hope you can join us from Monday to Friday, half past 10 to 11. So this morning, Graham Poland will continue teaching this series on 2 Peter chapter 2. It's amazing teaching and uh, we will be praying for God using Graham's teaching this morning to speak to us. So also we prepare uh, an amazing worship song with uh, some worship leaders from Barnes Depot and BG4. They playing together and uh, I'm sure you, you enjoy that. Okay, so let's pray asking God to bless this devotional and asking the Holy Spirit to speak to all of us and especially for Graham's message as he will be teaching us. Lord, we thank you for this new week, this new day. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. I want you to a special thank you, Lord, for Graham's uh, disposition on the teaching us in July, every Monday, uh, sharing about uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, about uh, heresies, and uh, giving us some advice and some guidelines from the Bible, how we avoid to be contaminated. And I just also pray for this amazing worship song that uh, worship leaders from Barnesville and BG4 prepare for us. So, Lord, we surrender this time into your hands, asking you to bless us and bless each one who is connected with us now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Just before uh, Graham's message, just to remind you that uh, we've been recording daily devotional and uploading later on in our Grosvenor Church Barnes Depot YouTube channel. If you miss any devotional, you just go to YouTube and watch it. I'm sure God will be bless you because every day from Monday to Friday, we have a brother or a sister sharing how God has been speaking to them. So, see you later. God bless you. Last week, we looked at six characteristics of the false teachers that appear in 2 Peter chapter 2 who were infiltrating the church of that day. These characteristics help us to recognize false teachers today, warning lights that are flashing up on our spiritual dashboard. There were people who were secretive, they were negative, abusive, subversive and held captive to corrupt ways. Not all characteristics may be present in one person but it gives us an idea of the warning signs to look out for by which we can recognize that something is wrong. But before we consider how we respond to them, there's a question that we left hanging last week. Are these people genuine Christians? The description of waterless springs in verse 17 suggests there's no evidence that they are what they claim to be. Verses 20 and 21 says that they have the knowledge of Jesus and the way of righteousness, but it's only knowledge. And the proverb quoted in verse 22 of the dog returning to his vomit and the pig to wallow in the mire shows that their nature hasn't changed. Why does the dog return to the vomit? Because it's still a dog and the pig is still a pig. If your behavior is going to change, then your nature has to be changed first. Uh, Jesus warned us in Matthew 7, 15 and 16, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but un inwardly they're ravenous wolves. You'll recognize them by their fruits. Every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. So whenever you see the fruit of moral misbehavior or other 
the signs that I've mentioned watch out for heresies developing they may be false prophets and if they're on the internet and you can't see their behavior then google them research their website ask your family group leader their opinion about them compare their teaching with what you read and see in scripture but before we leave these people i want to say a word about their destiny because the chapter is full of warning about judgment somebody said to me the other day that uh, we never seem to hear any preaching about hell well verse 4 talks about hell and chains of gloomy darkness verse 17 for them the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved we don't hear much about hell because it's not pleasant to think about suffice it to say that nobody ends up in hell without choosing to be there michael green says this that the whole new testament sees god's future judgment as finalizing the choices men are making all their lives if you choose to live your life without god you will end up without god and that is exactly what hell is eternity without god and in chains of gloomy darkness is not where i want to be jesus peter paul and john all give warnings that those who distort or tamper with god's word and lead people astray will face judgment and it's that thought of judgment that occupies verses 4 through to 10 which leads me to this second question how do we respond to false teachers and generally to ungodliness in the world i want to look at the specifics in this chapter and then give some practical principles of how we respond to false teaching today the chapter has two examples of god intervening in judgment on the ungodly but rescuing the righteous the first is the example of noah in verse 5. we know the story of noah's ark very well the world had grown so wicked that God's judgment was inevitable. But there was one man in his family who stood out. How did he respond to the wickedness and moral depravity around him? Verse 5 says he was a herald of righteousness. In other words, he preached and modelled righteousness in the face of wickedness. He stood for and preached the truth. Hebrews 11 says he condemned the world. He stood out as righteous. And we must do the same. Jesus said that as in those days before the flood, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. The escalating moral depravity and sin around us will either suck us in or stand us out. What this chapter seems to be saying is that ungodly behavior will face judgment and the behavior of these false teachers betrays that they belong to that world and we need to stand up to uh, and stand out from uh, these false teachers the ark of course is a picture of jesus if we're trusting in jesus like they were sheltering in the ark we will be safe on the day of God's judgment. But secondly, there's the example of Lot in verses 6 through to 10. And this refers back to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and the judgment that fell on them because of what verse 7 calls their sensual conduct. How did Lot react? Well, it says that as that righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds that he saw and heard. How do we respond to the ungodliness around us? Are we grieved by what we see and hear? Does the constant blaspheming of the name of Jesus pierce our hearts or just pass over our heads? We know that the world will get steadily worse, particularly in the area of morality. Sometimes it feels as if we are being sucked into a cesspit of sin. But one day the Lord is going to rescue the righteous when he comes back. In the meantime, what we see and hear 
should torment our souls and make us pray for this world. It seems strange that these two examples are used to condemn false teachers in the church, but maybe it's to underline the seriousness with which God views abusive leadership and those who are counterfeit. They will not escape judgment. But I want to change gears and give some practical principles of how we respond to false teaching today. The problem with taking the script of 2 Peter 2 and writing it across the church in 2020 is that we have levels of false teaching. It would seem that these teachers deliberately infiltrated the church bringing heresy. They were sent by Satan to confuse and destroy and we're warned that this will happen again in the end times. But the subtlety of what's happening today is that there appears to be good intertwining with bad. We need to distinguish heresy in false teachers from people who just have a different opinion to us. How do we do that? Well, if you're looking for a quick fix answer, I, I can't give you that because you need to learn to discern for yourself. As I've already said, Jesus tells us to look at the fruit. Lavish lifestyles, manipulative and controlling behaviour, negativity, moral laxity are all fruit from a diseased tree. And Nathan Finn in an article for the Gospel Coalition says, many dangerous doctrines contradict the gospel in our own day. Some argue the gospel is about trusting God to bring about worldly prosperity. Others suggest it's possible to accept Jesus as your saviour while ignoring his claim to lordship over your life. Increasingly, some advocate homosexual marriage, ignoring both the scriptures and 2,000 years of Christian moral and theological reflection. Some believe Christianity boils down to serving others or fighting for social justice. Good things, to be sure, but they say little about sin or atonement. Dangerous doctrines come in different shapes and sizes, but they have what Danny Akin calls heretical maths, adding to, subtracting from, multiplying or dividing the gospel as their common denominator. And then tellingly, he reminds us that bad theology often equa equates to bad morality. Do you see signs of bad morality or secretive, negative, abusive, subversive or captive behaviour? Pay attention to those flashing warning lights. But to help you further, I'm going to post a useful link on this Facebook page that talks about the discipline of theological triage, teaching us to distinguish between first order issues like the deity of Christ, second order issues like forms of baptism, third order issues like personal views on when and how Jesus will return. In other words, distinguishing between what is heresy and what is opinion. I'll also send those articles to all family group leaders and suggest that they discuss this important topic with you. If you're looking for an A to Z of who's a heretic, I can't help you and give you that. But as I've said many times, the best way to recognize the counterfeit is to be so familiar with the genuine that you will spot the counterfeit. Commit to studying the truth. Submit yourself to a godly discipler who can help you to discern and always compare everything to the life and the teaching of Jesus. Next week we will move on to 2 Peter chapter 3 and a specific area of biblical doctrine that the false teachers were questioning. So I hope to see you uh, back here uh, next Monday.
Um, thank you very much for uh, being connected with us in our daily devotional. I hope you enjoyed this morning. Thank you very much, Graham, for your teaching. Uh, as you promise, you will be back here next Monday with the third part of the teaching of Second Peter chapter two. So uh, also thank you guys for this amazing worship song. I hope you have a blessed day and I'll yeah. bet you myself. I hope to see you tomorrow again, Hapastan here on Grosvenor Church Facebook page. God bless you and spread the news, invite people to get in connect with us. I'm sure they will be also blessed. Bye. Bye. God bless you.